Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time um, seeing my channel, please like and uh, hit subscribe. I would appreciate it. Um, I wanted to dive right in today and address some of the comments that I received in the Kind of Blue shootout that I posted just a couple days ago. And some of those comments were centering around this idea of um, me needing to, to explain the setup that I have um, that basically advised my critique of Kind of Blue. And I have to be honest, I was kind of um, surprised to see that feedback, um, not just from one person, but from several. And I think what I realized is that I was entering a little bit of a new world in terms of, um, in terms of, uh, of vinyl collecting. And what I'm getting at is this difference between, um, sort of the simplified view is vinyl collectors and then audiophiles. Um, and I've always identified myself much more as a vinyl collector rather than an audiophile. And as soon as you start comparing and contrasting, um, you know, uh, audiophile pressings of such a well-loved record, um, invariably I was going to encounter uh, this, this sort of convergence of these two worlds. And, and that was probably the first time uh, for me to experience that. Um, on Instagram, where I'm predominantly active, um, I would say, you know, the vast majority of my posts and comments are around original pressing jazz records and very few um, specific to, to equipment. And so it just, uh, it just took me by surprise. Um, and I want to kind of clarify, and this is going to be an oversimplification, but from as far as I can tell, this difference between, again, vinyl collectors and audiophiles. Um, on the vinyl collector side, uh, oftentimes you care about original pressings. Um, and, and sort of the rarity of the pressing rather than that's uh, something that's uh, that's mass produced. And, and there's a lot of faults with that, right? Is that, you know, this idea that, that rarity all of a sudden becomes what you're after rather than the actual music. Um, uh, and that you, you essentially overvalue certain types of records because they're so rare. Um, on the audiophile side, it seems like the priority is to have the best sounding pressing. And I'm sure you can get a sense of, of why these two things are very different. Um, especially in light of my review of, of Kind of Blue, where I said that the original pressing did not sound as good as the, uh, the 45 RPM UHQR. Um, one of the other things I find with vinyl collectors is that they're often, not always, but often genre specific. Um, so that's on one hand, and audiophiles are really cross genre. They're looking for the best music um, that, they can, that, that they can have that, that sort of um, allows them to experience the full uh, capacity of their uh, of their setup, um, and so they'll they'll span multiple genres. Um, an another thing I think is is interesting is that vinyl collectors will listen to uh, less than stellar condition uh, copies of, of vinyl, and and audio files really it, it seems to me it's it's near min or nothing. And I understand these are these are these are the polar extremes, right? And, and most of us most of us fall somewhere in in between, right? And and maybe. Um, maybe the I ideal state, right, is is to as to prioritize both, be right in the center between uh, vinyl collectors and audiophiles. And again, maybe audiophile is not the right word, but you know what I'm getting at, like hi-fi equipment focused folks. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I'm not one of them, and so it's hard for me to um, really describe it. Um, so where I'm at on this spectrum, uh, vinyl collectors to audiophiles, is I'm really like, I'm really like right here. You know, I'm, I've been collecting uh, original pressing vinyl for about a decade now, um, and that was my uh, exclusive priority. I had G plus records that I would listen to happily uh, if it was a original or, or maybe a very early reissue because I've really felt the need to, uh, to maybe do two things. One is have a copy of every album that I felt like was important. And then the other was I, I kind of became a completist with it. One of the other factors that you'll, uh, you'll often find with vinyl collectors is that they feel the need to be sort of the conservators of music. Um, you know, that, that I'm, I'm gonna collect all of these, these original items and I'm gonna take good care of them and, and, and someday this, this collection is gonna be, um, you know, worth more than the sum of its parts. Um, and, and that is, you know, again, that's kind of an extreme. And I'm not all the way there, but I'm, I'm definitely more in this space. Um, so anyway, all that being said, this this topic of what equipment do I use, uh, I I, uh, I have spent some time upgrading individual components over the years, but but very very few. I'm literally on my second turntable in ten years. Um, I'm on my third. I don't want to call it receiver. The first uh, the first two 
um, the first two sort of receiver units were, were uh, solid state integrated units. Um, one was a Lafayette and the other is a Marantz uh, 2270, which I still have. Um, and and I've, I have moved beyond that. And, uh, you know, maybe some would say that's a, that's a good step uh, into, uh, into having a, a separate um, power amp and, uh, and preamp. Um, but uh, I, I, the fact of the matter is, is that I, I'm, I haven't prioritized upgrading uh, any of my equipment. Um, and, and I think um, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through, I guess, each of the, uh, the different components that I, that I have just for your reference, and then I can refer back to this video in the future in case anybody asks me, hey, what are you using uh, when you tell me that the UHQR sounds better than the, um, you know, than, the, than the MoFi kind of blue? So let's start linearly with the first thing that touches the vinyl, which is the stylus and cartridge. Um, I've been through a variety of what I'll call not necessarily entry level cartridges, but probably whatever the next level is, the sort of $100 to $200 range. Um, from Grado models to the Sumiko Pearl, some of the audio technic options. But over the last three years, I've stuck with the Naga Oka MP110. Um, you know, I listen to almost exclusively instrumental jazz, and I also listen to mostly vintage pressings, and some, frankly, aren't in the best shape. So I need something that's a little bit of a workhorse, and I don't have to worry about it encountering blemishes in the vinyl. Uh, it's a moving magnet cartridge with the elliptical stylus tip. Keep my tracking force right at about 1.5 or 1.6 grams, uh, which is uh, within the recommended range. This thing is easy to find in terms of replacements, and it's inexpensive, which is good because I listen to a lot of vinyl and go through a new one almost every year or so. So next up is the turntable. This is a Marantz model 6200. Um, I'll say this, I, I primarily chose it originally to match my 2270 receiver. I still have it, even though I don't use the Marantz as a primary component anymore. Um, it's, it's just your standard belt drive turntable from the mid 70s, honestly. Uh, I still have the original S-shaped tone arm on it. It has the strobe speed tuning, which is fun to look at, but honestly, a huge pain to get right. On to the preamp. Um, this is a classic, the Macintosh Model C26. I know it doesn't compete with some of the two models, but this one came at a fraction of the cost, honestly. I found it on Facebook Marketplace about two years ago. Um, I've had it serviced, it's been working great. Um, I think the phono signal to noise ratio is something people care about. Um, and for a moving magnet, it's 74 decibels, and the line level signal to noise ratio on this is uh, 85 decibels. The power amp is also a classic, especially paired with the uh, C26, um, and it's a Macintosh MC2105. I got this from the same Facebook Marketplace seller, uh, had it fully serviced as well. Um, it's a solid state amplifier with a power output of 105 watts per channel into 8 ohms. This thing is a tank. It feels like it weighs 1,000 pounds. Um, one thing I'll say before you say it is, I know ideally these things should not be sitting on my record cabinets because of vibration that would cause uh, noise. I agree, um, but I also have space constraints. Um, I've partially covered for this in a few ways. One is that even though it looks like it's sitting on the same cabinet as my turntable, it is not. They are on separate cabinets that are next to each other. I also have some basically rubber pucks that my uh, turntable sits on to help reduce vibration from the room. And now the speakers. Uh, these are KEF LS50 speakers. They are not the Meta model, not KEF LS52s. They are not wireless either. Um, why do everything analog only to have it be wireless before you hear it, I suppose, is the idea. Um, I really like these speakers. These are supposedly tuned for smaller rooms. And guess what? My listening room is standard bedroom size, something like 11 by 15 feet or so. Um, these have a sensitivity rating of 85 decibels, which I realize is not terribly efficient, but no problems given my other components. I will say that I bought a Rysong A12 tube amp some time ago just to dip my toe into, uh, into the format, and it did have a harder time actually driving these speakers, but, but like I said, um, haven't had any issues with the, uh, the Marantz pairing. All right, last thing, and the most recent addition, and that is a subwoofer. This is the KEF KC62. Um, it's a relatively recent model in terms of when it debuted. I chose it for a few reasons. One is that it's tiny. Uh, it seems to perform really well. It was an open box item at my local hi-fi shop, and I wanna say Steve Gutenberg spoke highly of it on his YouTube channel, to be honest. Uh, this thing has two six and a half inch force canceling drive units, Powered by a total of 1,000 watts RMS, had to look it up. It means root mean square, and I think it just means continuous power output. 
Uh, to be honest, I do not have this thing positioned right just yet. It seems to be an ongoing process to uh, essentially have it disappear in the room, and I'm working through it, but uh, enjoying the impact it has on my overall uh, listening experience so far. I know that I'm about to invite a lot of uh, critiques or criticism, um, simply because the, the sort of the, the minimal amount of sense that I've gotten about this, this audio file or hi-fi world, um, I know everybody has opinions about um, not only, you know, is your setup the right setup, but, but what is the best way for you to improve it? Um, because there's this constant sense of, of upgrading and finding the next best thing and testing and trying to get the, these kind of, these very incremental upgrades, right? Um, and, uh, and again, you know, maybe on the flip side in the, uh, in the, in the vinyl collector world, it's, it's, you know, I want to get a little bit better condition, a little bit better condition, always trying to upgrade individual records. I, I know some of the feedback I'm going to get because I've gotten it before. Um, there's going to be the, the folks who, who are going to say I need a dedicated phono stage. Um, there'll be some that will say that I need to swap tone arms. Um, There'll be others that, that'll say that I, oh, I need to have a, um, you know, a, a tube amp, a Macintosh tube amp. Um, I, one of the things that always, uh, that always makes me laugh is I've received feedback in the past that I need bigger speakers. They see a picture of my room and they say I need bigger speakers, which I think is, um, is ridiculous, first of all. <laughs> and, and, I'll, and I'll get, I'll, I'll get more into, uh, into, into what I, uh, you know, my, my feedback on, uh, in the comments as, as I receive these comments coming in. But I, some of this stuff, I don't understand how you can tell me what I should have when you haven't listened to music in my room. And so when you say bigger speakers, it's like, you don't know what my speakers sound like in this room. You don't know the size of the room. Um, anyway, um, I'm trying to think what else I'm probably going to get. Oh, a lot of people are going to say that I need to um, move out of moving magnet and into a moving coil cartridge. Um, th these are some of the things that I hear um, or that, that maybe my equipment is mismatched. And at the same time that I've heard it before... I kind of welcome the discussion, as long as you don't tell me to, to just get bigger speakers without more information on that. Um, you know, I, I'm not, to, this is an evolution for all of us, right? And, and we're always learning. And, and for me, for the most part, it's been learning about music and, and slowly but surely, I've, I've kind of been moving a little bit more into the equipment side, but not that much. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna upgrade my, um, my amplifier at the expense of getting you know, like a, an original pressing Hank Mobley 1568. Like, I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. And so I'm, I'm always gonna be prioritizing that, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit more into equipment. Okay, uh, enough, that's it. Um, thanks very much. Please uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, look out for some, what I think are exciting upcoming uh, A-B tester uh, shootout videos in the very near future. Thank you.